Number 1. View of the Universe A new era has dawned in which we can look farther into the universe than ever before. On Monday at the White House, President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and NASA Administrator Bill Nelson released the first science quality image, taken by the $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope. According to NASA, the image is the deepest infrared view of the cosmos to date, and it was taken with only 12.5 hours of observing time on one of the telescope's four sensors. Biden praised the painting for its depiction of the country and the strength of science. This telescope embodies how America leads the world, not by the example of our power, but the power of our example, he went on to say. The White House announcement is a prelude to a NASA event on Tuesday, commencing at 10.30 a.m. EDT, which you can watch live here on Space.com thanks to the agency. NASA has already promised some of the celestial objects that space enthusiasts might expect to see in these photos. The agency announced on Friday that tomorrow's event would include views of the Carina and Southern Ring nebulas, as well as Stefan's quintet of closely packed stars. WASP-96b observations are also on the program, albeit JWST will not provide an image of the distant world. Instead, scientists will present a spectrum of the planet, which divides light into wavelengths and provides information on the planet's chemical composition. Number 2. Globular Cluster M92 Webb's near-cam sensor obtained this detail of the globular cluster Messier 92. This field of vision encompasses the lower left quarter of the image's right half. Globular clusters are dense clumps of closely packed stars that formed all at once. M92 contains approximately 300,000 stars packed into a ball roughly 100 light years across. The night sky of a planet in the center of M92 would be illuminated by thousands of stars, thousands of times brighter than those in our own sky. The image depicts stars at various distances from the cluster's core, which aids scientists in understanding the motion of the stars and the mechanics of that motion. Number 3. NGC 1433 The James Webb Space Telescope captured this image of one of 19 galaxies, chosen for research by the physics at high angular resolution in nearby galaxies team. When seen with Webb's mid-infrared instrument, the nearby barred spiral galaxy NGC 1433 takes on a whole different appearance. The spiral arms of NGC 1433 are riddled with evidence of incredibly young stars releasing energy and in some cases blowing away the interstellar medium's gas and dust. Webb's infrared eye illuminates areas that appear dark and dim in optical imaging. This is caused to clumps of dust and gas in the interstellar medium absorbing and radiating infrared light from developing stars. Webb's image of NGC 1433 is a powerful demonstration of how dynamic processes involved with star formation influence the overall structure of a galaxy. With Webb's extraordinary resolution, a tight, brilliant core with a distinctive double ring structure sparkles in exquisite detail near the galaxy's center. The double ring in this case is really tightly wrapped spiral arms that wound into an oval form along the galaxy's bar. NGC 1433 is a ciphered galaxy, which is normally close to Earth and includes a supermassive black hole at its center that consumes material at a rapid rate. The brightness and lack of dust in NGC 1433's Miri image could indicate a recent collision with another galaxy. Number 4. NGC 7,496 scientists are receiving their first look at how the creation of newborn stars affects the history of surrounding galaxies using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's extraordinary resolution. In this view from Webb's mid-infrared instrument, Mirai, the spiral arms of NGC 7,496, one of 19 galaxies designated for research by the physics at high angular resolution in nearby galaxies collaboration, are packed with cavernous bubbles and shells overlapping one another. These filaments and hollow cavities are evidence of young stars releasing energy, and in some cases, blowing out the gas and dust that surrounds them in the interstellar medium. Until Webb's exceptional resolution at infrared wavelengths, Stars at the beginning of their lives in neighboring galaxies like NGC 7496 were hidden by gas and dust. Webb's unique wavelength coverage 
enables the identification of complex organic chemicals known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are important in the formation of stars and planets. In Webb's Miri image, these are predominantly located within the spiral arm's primary dust lanes. Number 5. NGC. 1365 scientists are receiving their first look at how the creation of newborn stars affects the history of surrounding galaxies using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's extraordinary resolution. NGC 1365, photographed with Webb's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, is one of 19 galaxies chosen for investigation by the physics at high angular resolution in nearby galaxies, FANG's team. In the MIRI observations of NGC 1365, clumps of dust and gas in the interstellar medium absorbed light from forming stars and emitted it back out in the infrared, illuminating an intricate network of cavernous bubbles and filamentary shells formed by young stars releasing energy into the galaxy's spiral arms. Number 6. NGC 14. 33. Webb's mid-infrared instrument took this image of the nearby galaxy NGC 1433, which includes compass arrows, a scale bar, and a color key for reference. The north and east compass arrows indicate the image's orientation in the sky. The relationship between north and east on the sky is flipped compared to direction arrows on a ground map. A scale bar labeled 7,000 light years, 30 arc seconds is located on the lower right, the scaling bar's length is around one-fifth the image's whole width. A color key is provided below the image, indicating which MIRI filters were used to construct the image and which visible light color is allocated to each filter. Number 7. Southern Ring Nebula's Spokes In the view from the Webb Space Telescope, look for the straight, brightly lit lines that penetrate through the rings of gas and dust around the margins of the Southern Ring Nebula. These spokes appear to emanate from one or both of the center stars, indicating where light passes through nebula holes. The holes show where the dimmer star that formed this scene ejected material, leaving free paths for light to pass through. Some of the star's ejections followed thin, straight lines through the gas and dust, second box. Others, first box, appear twisted, curved, and bulkier. Why? Orsola De Marco of Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia, led a team of academics that studied how these complex structures would have arisen. Studies of planetary nebulae have revealed that even when dead stars eject their gas and dust from all directions at the same time, the outflowing gas may not remain symmetrical for long. The team hypothesizes that straight lines in the Southern Ring Nebula were fired out hundreds of years sooner and at faster rates than those that appear thicker and curvier. It's probable that the second set is a combination of materials that slowed, resulting in less linearity. Number 8. Star Interactions How did all of the partygoers, up to five stars, contribute to the formation of the Southern Ring Nebula? Let's press rewind and go over the exchanges that may have led to the scene. To begin with, none of these pictures are properly sized, and three or four of the stars would be too faint and dim to appear in Webb's vision. Second, in the sixth and last panel above, we only see stars one and two. The last three guests will be identified as stars three and four. They are all significantly less massive, that is, much smaller and brighter, than stars one and two. The first illustration depicts a larger field. Star one, the most massive of the five stars in this group, is the fastest to age and is responsible for the formation of the planetary nebula. Star 2 orbits Star 1 very slowly, as shown in the last figure. At this point, everything is quite tranquil as they orbit one another. However, there is another star on the scene, number 5. It orbits Star 1 much more closely than Star 2. Let the games begin. The second panel zooms in on the scenario, revealing two more friends. Star 1 has begun to enlarge due to its rapid aging, swallowing Star 3. Star 3 begins to suck material from Star 1 through gravity and launches jets in both directions. Star 4 is nearby, but has not yet interacted. The final panel depicts how much Star 1 has grown over time. Two more comrades join the fray. Stars 3 and 4 have released a slew of bipolar jets. As these two stars interact, their jets tumble, resulting in the uneven, wavy edges of the gas and dust released by aging Star 1. Within the gas and dust star, one has ejected, partners 3 and 4 are interacting. 
we zoom out in panel 4 to view more of the scene. The freshly exposed ultra-hot core of Star 1's newly exposed ultra-hot core is helping to carve out its previously expelled gas and dust, forming a bubble-like cavity. There is also a disk of material left over from past interactions with Star 3. Star 3 is no longer visible, but Star 5 has appeared. It has a larger orbit, and like a knife in icing, is drawing lines through the ejected gas and dust from Star 1. Number 9. L. 1527 and Protostar. The Protostar trapped within the black cloud, L1527, as seen in this image from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope near infrared camera, is surrounded by a cloud of material that is feeding its growth. Ejections from the star have created cavities above and below it, the edges of which shine orange and blue in this infrared image. Due to stellar burps, or occasional ejections, the top central region has bubble-like formations. Webb also detects filaments of molecular hydrogen that have been shocked by star ejections in the past. The cavity's upper left and bottom right edges appear straight, while the upper right and lower left boundaries appear curved. The lower right region appears blue because there is less dust between it and Webb than the orange regions above it. Number 10. Tarantula Nebula Webb focuses on the area surrounding the center star cluster at longer wavelengths of light, recorded by its mid-infrared instrument, revealing a vastly different perspective of the Tarantula Nebula. In this light, the cluster's young hot stars diminish in brightness and luminous gas and dust emerge. The surfaces of the dust clouds, which are represented in blue and purple, are illuminated by abundant hydrocarbons. Because mid-infrared light, can reveal more of what is going on deeper inside the clouds. Most of the nebula seems ghostly and diffuse. Within their dusty cocoons, still embedded protostars appear, including a bright bunch at the extreme top border of the photograph, left of center. 